There are challenges, there continue to be challenges in Afghanistan. And I'm focused a little bit differently now personally as the Resolute Support Commander compared to when I was here last time. I'm dealing at the, a different level with President Ghani, Dr. Dula. So for me personally, the challenges are dealing with the National Unity Government, ensuring that they continue to move forward. They've got to put a cabinet in place. They've got to make some changes in leadership. They've got to hold people accountable. But at the same time, what Resolute Support is doing is really prioritizing some of the things that we can train, advise, and assist on with a lower number of people here, lower number of resources, and trying to maintain what we've established over the last 13 or 14 years and build upon that. I think what we're able to do with Resolute Support is to be able to continue to train, advise, and assist at the core level and then at the ministry level, and then do only at the tactical level with the Special Operating Forces. I think we're making progress here, but again, the National Union Government and what they do at that level to continue to move forward depends a great deal on what they do. I've heard the mission described as a way to validate, to verify our investment here for the last 14 years. What we're trying to do is continue to work with the Afghan partners. We knew for a long time as we took a look at when we would be uh, starting to reduce uh, the number of forces that we had here, that there would be gaps and seams that we'd need to continue to build upon. Those were in aviation, close air support, intelligence, logistics, special operating forces. We went to eight essential functions that really takes a look at areas that they need to continue to develop so they can sustain the force that we've built over time here. Programming, planning, budgeting, execution is one of our essential functions. Transparency, accountability, oversight, rule of law, force generation, intelligence, strategic communications, those type of things we've got to continue to work on at the ministry level and at the core level. Are they receptive? Yeah, absolutely. I, th I think the, the Afghan leadership understands how, how important those are to continue to move forward. They have taken on this fight. I mean, they own the security of their country. Uh, it's time for them to do that. They're ready. They've done that. The fighting season has begun. There's been suicide bombs. Uh, there's been an insider attack, the loss of a life of a U.S. soldier. Afghanistan remains a dangerous place. We've been told that this is the year where the Afghan security forces will stand and fight on their own. Will they be enough? Yeah, I think they understand how important this fighting season is, uh, that they are on their own, they do have the lead. Look, look, I mean, the Taliban doesn't have up armored Humvees, it doesn't have MRAPs, it doesn't have D-30 howitzers, it doesn't have MI-17 version 5 helicopters, it doesn't have a couple MI-35s, it doesn't have the technology that the Afghan security forces have, it doesn't have the weaponry. There's no way that the Taliban are going to take over Afghanistan. I don't fear for, for Kabul being overrun by, by the Taliban. Uh, the Afghan security forces understand they have the lead for security. They want that lead. They are a sovereign country. Are you going to have suicide vest bombers? Are you going to have a magnetic ID placed on a bus inside of Kabul with a city of five million people? Yes, it's going to happen. But for every one of those magnetic IDs that goes on a bus, you, what you don't hear about is the 10 that they stopped. There's a lot of good news story going on in Afghanistan. The issue is getting that out and making sure people understand uh, what they do. Will there continue to be challenges? Yeah. Yes. I mean, this is a very, very dangerous country. It's only known war for the last 35 plus years. You know, but President Ghani and Dr. Brule with this national union government have the confidence of the people. 85% of the nation is underneath and voted for the national union government. So it's time now for the Taliban, the insurgents, to come back into the political process. It's Muslims killing Muslims. Why are they doing that? You know, they got to come into the political process. And President Ghani, Dr. Abdullah are really trying to work that hard. Okay, so you're talking about security for Kabul, but what about outside of Kabul? Will that be secure? Yeah, I mean, the governance piece is a huge issue. So if you're in a, if a, a small remote village way up in Kunar someplace and you don't have any governance, you know, you're going to look to uh, what is going to provide you that. In many of those cases, uh, the insurgents out there are the only ones out there that may have the ability through force, through putting fear in people's hearts, that provide uh, some sort of governance for them. They do very well on the information warfare, getting their news out in the media saying, hey, we attacked this. 85 percent of the civilians killed are killed by the Taliban. Uh, the support from the people of Afghanistan for the Taliban is less than 10 percent. To have an insurgency, you need the support of people. And we just see that continue to go down. You know, the, the Afghan people want the same things we do. They want a roof over their head. They want to be able to provide for the family. Uh, they want a job. The Taliban don't offer, the, offer that. The Afghan government has to do a better job of reaching out to some of these remote areas. But I think, again, they're going to continue to work that very hard. And what about the Afghan local police? Is that still a valid program? The Afghan local police were designed to provide security for that village. 
They're not trained, manned, or equipped like the Army or the regular police. They don't have the weaponry. But they are designed to have the trust and confidence of the senior elders of that village and provide sort of a defensive for that village. The problem we've had in the last year or so, they put them outside of the village, they put them farther away, and they don't have mutually supporting positions. And so they become very easy, soft targets for the Taliban to attack. And consequently, their uh, casualty rate was the highest. Sir, I've spoken to U.S. and coalition soldiers over the last few days, and they all say that this is the time for the Afghan security forces to step up and own the fight. Yeah, no, absolutely. They want to do that. They understand that uh, the coalition has been downsized. We don't have 120, 140,000 folks here like we did a couple years ago. So they have to own it. It's a sovereign country. They want to protect their people. They have the technology. In most cases, they have the training. They've got to have the confidence. They have to have the leadership. You know, leadership and then holding people accountable is what I tell President Ghani and Dr. Dula they need to really focus on. 88% of the people support the Afghan security forces. It's the number one trusted institution in the Army for Afghanistan. The police is in the 70 percentile range. A couple years ago, I would tell you that, wouldn't have been, that would not have happened. Their air force, their special operating forces continues to grow. Their special operating forces are probably the best in the region. They continue to work hard. Again, they get the right leadership. They continue to hold people accountable. they got to get after the corruption. The recent operation in Helmand has been held as a success. They killed their enemies. They gathered up their weapons. They chased the bad guys away. Will they be able to hold? Yeah, well, this is a great, uh, great example of what we think the future is going to be in Afghanistan. Police, Army, or intel forces, or aviation, the special operating forces, all working together. It was very complex. It involved three different corps. They were very methodical in how they went about this. I think they were very successful in meeting the objectives that they had set for themselves. But the key will be, will they be able to hold that as they move forward? And that's what the people will take a look at. I think they've made some adjustments in their structure. They worked a lot with the district governors and the people and really tried to get at uh, community policing in some of those areas. So I think time will tell, but I think they had a lot of focus and a lot of things they put together for this. And we'll see. The focus of the Train Advise Assist mission is to help develop and solidify their systems and procedures. Advisors that I've spoken to have said that they've also had to learn how to say no. It is time now for them to have the lead. They have the lead. They want the lead. So as we look at it, so for instance, uh, I get asked, hey, we need close air support. Okay, so what have you done for yourself? You know, have you used your own MI-17s? Have you used your own MI-35s? Have you fired your own howitzers? You know, have you put a quick reaction force out there? I don't have a lot of that to provide to them. What we do provide, though, is the training piece and the advising piece. So General Campbell, from the American perspective, what's the end game? Well, I think from the American perspective, what they have now is a national union government that is a willing partner as they look toward the future. President Ghani is going after corruption. He's trying, he is a commander in chief. He's taken the, the Afghan security forces underneath his wing. He's looking forward to moving forward and making sure that Afghanistan is a stable, secure environment for, for citizens. He's engaging the region, whether it's Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, China, India, Iran. I think the American people ought to know they've made a big difference here. People ask me, is it worth it? I, I tell them, absolutely. And if you take a look at any of the measurable statistics, whether it's roads, cell phones, life expectancy, people in school, teachers, jobs, on and on, those numbers continue to go up. And without security, and without the sacrifice of our men and women, you know, wouldn't have been there. If you look around the rest of the world, uh, it's a pretty dangerous and complex place. And Afghanistan has an opportunity to be a stabilizing factor. It will continue to be dangerous, but with a government in place now that's moving forward, uh, with a president that has a vision to make sure that it is a country that is stable and takes care of its people, and for a small investment for our continued future, this can be the stable area for, for this part of the world for a long time. And then one final question. We've seen a lot of advances over the years. Are they at the point where there's no turning back? They will keep progressing? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think we're there. They'll, they'll continue to move forward. But they have to be able to get after the, the economic issues that they have in this country. So they've got to get the cabinet in place. They can't afford the army and the police they have today. They're very dependent upon donor nations. We have 41 countries tied into resolute support. So President Ghani understands that. He's working very hard with all the regional countries to move forward. I think we have to give that opportunity to work.